In today's class, we will read the very famous poem Desiderata by Max Ehrman. Do not deal this as a poem only because this is actually a life lesson. Throughout this poem, you will get many an advices that will help you to provide a positive outlook. It will help you to be calm and poised amid such noise and disturbances. It will help you how to achieve happiness. It will help you to find the meaning, the actual meaning of life. It will show you not to compare yourself with others. That will that may demotivate you. That, that, that may discourage your motives. Rather be happy with your own achievements. Desiderata, that is a Latin word. It means desired things. So we all will read this poem together and hopefully you will get a life lesson after reading this poem. So let us begin with the reading. Hope the book is with all of you. If you don't have, Please keep it open. We will revise this. So, let's begin. Go placidly amid the noise and haste. And remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as pos possible without surrender. Be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly. And listen to others. Even the dull and the ignorant, they too have their story. Means the world is actually a chaotic place. It is full of, full of clamor and disturbance. Everyone is in hurry to move ahead. Every person is chasing their dreams and aspirations. In such tumultuous situation, it is extremely difficult to maintain your inner poise, your internal state of balance. The poet here advises us to go placidly amid the clamor and confusion. He reminds us that there is absolute serenity in silence. Silence brings moments of self-introspection. And self-analysis that is there written at last. And actually the poet, poet urges us to be polite with everybody. With whoever we have come across in, in a journey of our life. We should treat each other with compassion and sympathy. This will help us to understand their pain and suffering. However, our act of politeness should be without compromising and self-respect. We should have the ability to voice our opinion quietly and distinctly without being rude and forceful. He also asks us to ignore all the prejudices and move ahead with a clear head. Every person has a story to tell. Do listen to all the stories with same passion and empathy. These virtues will help us to cope with all the hurdles in our lives. Next. Avoid loud, aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. You may... Become vain and bitter if you compare yourself with others. For always there will be greater and lesser person than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. So here the world that we inhibit represents a diversity filled with miscellaneous people with various nature, plans and achievements. Some are introverts, some are extremely amicable, 
some are polite and others are belligerent the poet particularly instructs us to avoid this type of people in poet's words they are vexatious to the spirit so they are violent in nature and troublesome to our spirits so what the poet actually suggests us he suggests us that we should not compare ourselves with others every person has their own aura and their own uh, philosophy and um, introspective views about their lives better not to compare yourself with anyone brother you introspect in your own world enjoy your own achievements and your own plans because that will help you being happy right next stanza keep interested in your career however humble it's a real possession in the changing fortunes of time exercise caution in your business affairs for the world is full of trickery but let this not blind you to what virtue there is many persons strive for high ideals and everywhere life is full of heroism the poet encourages us to pay attention to our own profession however how, however humble it might be we should perform every task with equal love care compassion and most of all devotion it is the only priceless treasure that we possess however the poet wants us to advance further with cautionary steps we need to be careful in managing our business affairs as the world is full of imposters they are lurking in the darkness waiting to beguile innocent persons at every moment amid this we must not forget the importance of virtue and morality because if these are lost then everything is lost we must not be over cautious in everything and lose our virtues self in the process the world is also inhabited by those who try to achieve higher ideals in their lives we should not obliterate the fact that the world consists of tricksters as well as heroic people so you will get the combination of everything in this world but it's up to you how would you proceed with your own morality and with your own virtuous thoughts which one to choose whoever to go forward that's up to you and if you are losing your virtue your philosophy your morality of life then who will judge you who will show you the right path not to get engrossed because these are nothing but your hallucination you please be calm have your own thoughts be virtuous have the perfect morality to balance everything that is going to come in your ways next be yourself especially do not feign affection neither be cynical about love no in the face of all adidit and this enchantment it is the perennial as the grass so in in this stanza the poet begins with you know with with brilliant piece of advice what is he saying here he is saying that you know he rather asks us to retain our individual self he is urging us to be our own selves 
we must be true to ourselves and act in accordance with who we are and what we believe in insecurities plague the minds of the people which lead them to neglect their inner self an obsession to imitate others grasps them he asks us not to feign affection we should not pretend to be affectionate if we lack it from inside don't be superfluous whatever is there inside you just show that don't ever have double faces don't deceive others with your amicable thoughts whatever you are feeling from inside try to portray that from outside also the poet asks not to possess a skeptical view about love we must not become so suspicious or distrustful to others about their motives for, and that forget its importance in today's modern society the, there is full of complexities love is as fresh as grass everlasting and permanent it epitomizes purity unalloyed joy and freshness in today's depressed and this illusion world it is the greatest commandment we should concentrate on loving others and we can find our own life getting enriched next take kindly the counsel of the years gracefully surrounding the things of youth not just strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings may tears are born of fatigue and loneliness beyond a wholesome discipline be gentle with yourself the poet advises us to take the counsel of the years kindly old age is much more experienced and wise it is perfectly normal to grow up and mature with time when the time is ripe we must discard all the material things of youth gracefully we must realize the importance of leaving materialism embracing spiritualism with the passage of time we should cultivate in us strong spiritual powers that will help us to endure all the turbulences of our life it will act as a shield protecting us in sudden misfortune however we should not brood over this fall appreciate excessive indulgence in dark imaginings can make us afraid and it may ruin our positivity we should un self control we should not turn out to be the epitome of strict rules and regulations there should be an unwritten discipline controlling our actions but too much of it can have adverse effects on us we should also learn the values of compassion and generosity we should also be gentle to ourselves when required there you will not get always the you know the written rules that will guide you throughout some rules have to be unwritten but have, have you know but you need to uh, act as if they are there controlling you but it should not be so rigid because it may have adverse effect on you so there should be a perfect balance between everything and you with time you will realize that materialistic things have a may it may have an intense um, you know uh, intense uh, impact upon us but that is very temporary at the end we all have to embrace 
spirituality because we may find peace only in spiritualism next stanza you are a child of the universe no less than the trees and stars you have a right to be here and whether or not it is clear to you no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should so what the poet is saying here we all the children of universe now we are as much a part of this universe as the trees and the stars are everyone possesses equal rights however we shouldn't suffer from any uncertainty about the balance in universe everything is happening in the universe accordingly exactly the way it should have happened we must know that universe is working according to a fixed plan whether it is incomprehensible to us or not then therefore be at peace with god whatever you convince him to be and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life keep peace with your soul therefore it is necessary that we make peace with god and with ourselves this would help us to prosper in the long run we should place ourselves under the complete charge of omnipotent almighty we need to be at peace with our own actions in this world of doubt and confusion irrespective of our arduous efforts and struggles it is very important to have peace in our soul amid mundane monotony so it's very necessary to strike the balance amid such monotony and disturbance you should have peace with yourself and with god in order to strike the perfect balance you need to do this because there are ways that may uh, you know show you the wrong path but amid such a uh, noisy situation where there is full of turbulences it's very hard to strike the perfect balance but it's possible if you have peace with yourself and with god then the last stanza with all its sham drudgery and broken dreams it is still a beautiful world be cheerful strive to be happy the poet asks us to accept the world as it is he knows that the world is filled with shallow foppery melancholy broken dreams and aspirations however we must imbibe in us accepting attitude and consider the peace with all its beauties and flaws so only a cheerful person can move through challenges and emerge victorious so what the poet is saying here the poet is saying that accept the world as it is you have to strive the happiness and you can find it only when you accept the world with its beauties along with its flaws this is a beautiful world at the end of the day and we all should keep that in our mind and to have peace to strive the ultimate placid situation you will get only when you have an adventurous tour towards your inner self right so this is a beautiful poem with a lot of advices that will really help you to uh, discover new meaning of life hopefully this was helpful don't treat this as a poem rather read this as a bunch of good advices that will surely be helpful while uh, taking a big and um, a really important decision of your life 
while you will feel distressed while you will just sit in vacant mood you may feel very sad uh, you know that may happen to all of us but with a poem when we read a poem with such positive vibe we also we can feel this positivity is all around us so it's everything everything is there everything is there inside us we need to know the art only so this art of living will be told by this poem so hopefully you will read this poem and after reading this poem whatever thoughts came into your mind how did you perceive this poem please let me know okay and i am going to end this class here in the next class i'll discuss the poem in more details and obviously uh, a few more um, little links are there that i'll discuss then okay so till then take care of yourself have a happy day ahead thank you so much